Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've been working on as far as game development goes. So the main idea here is to talk about my experiences and show what I've been working on in terms of game development, and that will mean Unity Engine, possibly GIMP. I mean, GIMP is a really good tool, and I'm pretty sure that's probably what I'm going to stick with. But in the end, we'll have to see where that goes. So in this video, we're going to be starting off with pixel art. Now, I would not describe myself as a artist, or at least a very good one. And that's one of the reasons I want to try working with pixel art that's probably in a similar capacity to something like Undertale which was basically created solo developed by Toby Fox um, it just it's easier to work with if you make a mistake you can go back and change it easier and you don't have to have extremely awesome 3d modeling skills to pull it off so it does seem like it would be a pretty good starting place so in order to create this furniture, I'm kind of just eyeballing it. I was referencing uh, Toriel's house as a starting place for a lot of what it, what's going on here. The main things that that comes down to is one, using a very restrictive color scheme. Um, the art in Undertale only allows you to really have a few colors in each object, which is interesting in some ways because it forces you to be a little bit more creative in the placement of your pixels and it makes it look more simplistic but kind of in a more cute way um, rather than having a huge array of colors and things maybe getting more complex and looking completely different. And then not only that each object has only a couple colors, but that the color scheme is very consistent. So if you've ever played Undertale, and yeah, I'll be talking about it a lot because that's kind of what I have in mind right now, uh, you'll notice that in each room or each scene, although the colors do s change across the game, um, on one screen, you'll basically see one color be really dominant in the appearance of everything. In my eyes, and once again, complete amateur opinion, but it goes a long way to make it look more thematic. And I guess you could say unified as well. Um, now, how I'm actually doing this is really just eyeballing it. I'm aware of some basic techniques, like if you want something to look rounded, just remove one of the corner pixels. And yeah, I've noticed that really helps out a lot. Probably, I imagine, before the end, if this does actually develop into a full-fledged game project, which it may, then there's a really good chance I'd need to go back in and make some small edits, but that'll be fine because I'll just have the sprite sheets backed up to edit or even recolor or whatever I need to do with it in the future. So while you can watch me work on some basic pixel art in the background, I guess we can talk about the current state of what I have in mind for going forward. So firstly, if this turns out to be something that people want, wanting to be able to see the creation of a game from start to finish, then there's a good chance I'll be documenting uh, everything in these dev logs which would probably be a daily or bi-daily thing. Now, what that also allows me to do is make tutorials that are a little bit more advanced and speak on it more uh, credibly, I would say, because I'd be actively applying all of the principles I'd be using. Now, obviously, uh, in no future area am I going to be saying, oh, well, look at my amazing Pixar art. You should obviously learn from my styles there. Um, but I think for the average person who wants to try these kinds of things out, playing around in the Unity engine or doing useful things inside of GIMP, then I think that'll help them. As for the game I would be trying to make, I don't have super solid ideas so far, but there are some inspirations I'd like to draw from in creating something that's at least a little bit original. Obviously, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So one would be a Cave Story, which is a 2D platformer that's got some RPG elements. I don't think that this or anything I'll be making in the near future is going to be a serious 2D platformer specifically, but the art style and the storyline of Cave Story, I liked that kind of thing a lot. And I, I think if you actually compare it to Undertale, it's got a lot of similarities there. Obviously, you've got the whole pixel art thing going on there, but it's also got kind of a cutesy overarching theme and a really pleasant storyline that has a fairly happy ending if you go through to the end. I would say that currently I'm a lot more interested in those type of games that actually have some kind of message going on there rather than just being a generic kill the 10 bosses, become super powered, level up your stats, and defeat the final boss at the end of the game. 
type deal. You see that a lot in very generic games, JRPGs for instance. And I think that's just been beaten to death. So if I could make something that's a little bit more focused on the message, I think that would be really cool. Um, and in Undertale, I would say Undertale is all about the message. The gameplay, you dodge attacks, and that's really cool. I like the Undertale battle system, but it's very simple. It mostly comes down to just dodging attacks, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, they threw in the whole mercy system, or you can attack things, but that's just more of a... Um, kind of a thematic choice rather than actual gameplay. But I guess what the Undertale system proves is that for a game to be fun and engaging, you don't necessarily have to just be swinging a sword and seeing it say 999999 damage every single time and feel like such a badass because you leveled up your stats. So if I can draw on Undertale for whatever I'd be making, um, then I think that would be really cool. Obviously, I don't want to just go ahead and copy the whole system. May like having the dodging component to that, where each boss has a pattern-based attack. You also see that in other games, Toho Project, for instance, uh, where it's kind of like a bullet hell or a side-scrolling space shooter. And I think it's been proven at this point that that's a very solid mechanic and can be a lot of fun. Um, I would say the Sands fight in Undertale, not going to spoil much about the fight, itself but it is very very intense and i don't think anyone who's actually played the game can forget that one option would actually be to not have any combat whatsoever um some other games out there which is house kind of comes to mind which is more the horror genre although it was made using rpg maker has very little rpg uh, gameplay elements in it rather you just kind of progress through a haunted house with a lot of puzzle solving opportunities and just getting caught up in the music and the audio ambience of it and it works very well in the end. Other things I'm playing around with are components of investigation, something like Ace Attorney where you have to collect evidence to bring a case against a particular character inside the game or figure out the mystery at the very least, maybe not an, a trial like a court game. But it could easily be something else like Danganronpa if I figured out uh, which kind of game mechanics would fit that. Okay, one last thing for this video, uh, which I think is a pretty interesting discussion which people could have, is where do you want to start with your game? Um, obviously, you could say the obvious choice is to start with the brainstorming concept phase of everything uh, and figure out the art, figure out the music, figure out the theme later on. Obviously, I'm kind of jumping the gun by going ahead and making semi-random pixel art that I just feel like creating at the moment. Um, but uh, if you actually listen to uh, professional devs like the Blizzard team, they've talked about how they go in and out of iterations for different card designs. And although they may have a concept in mind at the start, it can change completely by the time it goes to uh, the final release. And League of Legends would also be a really good example of that because they'll have character concepts from years ago and it takes a really long time for the champions you play to get officially released and things can change dramatically from the initial concept to the final concept. So in information technology, which is my original background, you don't want to get too caught up in solving a problem until you've identified what it is. You could kind of apply the same principle here, at least being able to identify what genre of game you're trying to work with is probably really important. You don't want to just go crank out the level designs until you're sure you're at least going to be working with a 2D platformer or a 2D RPG or something like that. If I was to get really into building out the core of the game, I think if there's going to be a battle system, I might actually start with that, since that's kind of the core of most games, especially RPGs. Um, having a good battle system is really important. Games like East or Tales of Symphonia could really attest to that. So although I might be creating pixel art right now to give myself a visual image of what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, I would say probably don't build out your entire game world until you're really confident about the direction you're heading with things. But again, that's just my internal thoughts on things currently. This is still really early on. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this devlog and you want to see more, let me know and I'll see you in my future content.